Authentication and authorization are both quite complex topics that are constantly evolving. That's why in this video I'm gonna bring you up to date with all the latest developments within the industry as well as some of the best practices that we have nowadays. And I'm gonna start with saying that authentication is not the same as authorization because some beginners developer actually confuse them. Now authentication is the process of you of logging you into some kind of a platform while authorization is the process of giving access to some kind of a resource. For example, if you're using Netflix and you don't have the premium subscription, you won't have access to those premium features or let's say the premium resources of Netflix. Now with that said, quick shout out to today's sponsor of the video, WorkOS, which is a platform that brings you a lot of enterprise features, including authentication and authorization out of the box, but more on that later. Now, authentication, what types of authentication do we have nowadays and what are the trends? Let's explore. So passwords, Honestly, they stink. Everyone's trying to move away from the passwords, but unfortunately, a lot of users are still reusing them. So they have their passwords in their minds or they have written them somewhere, saved them somewhere. So it's still being used widely. But honestly, if you're developing a new product from scratch, you should consider not having passwords or not being able to deal with them at all fundamentally because they are susceptible to all the kinds of attacks, man in the middle, phishing, whatever you can imagine, they are susceptible to those. And nowadays we have much better alternatives. Speaking of which, passkeys. Now passkeys is based on the standard called WebAuthn, which has been developed by Google, Microsoft and Apple. And it includes passkeys as a mean of saving the data or the secret on the device itself. Now, for example, it uses the basic cryptography that WhatsApp and Bitcoin is reliant upon or SSL, for example, the secure network communication. It uses private keys and public keys and you keep the private key, you give the public key to the authenticator or the server. In our case, it's the authenticator. And then you also have the challenge and then you're able to sign the data and the authenticator has the public key that it can use to decrypt the data and because it knows that only the owner of the private key can sign it. It's not simple. I'm gonna leave some links in the description for you to dig deeper to understand this process if you're into cryptography. But long story short, it's more secure than passwords because you have you don't have to remember any passwords. Your laptop, your browser, or your physical device is acting as an authenticator because you use either your biometrics, for example, to open your laptop or basically your laptop is acting as a secure vault. Now there are two types of passkeys. You have a platform authenticator, things like the your phone with face ID or your laptop with fingerprints or even the browser with its wallet, all right? And we have the roaming authenticator, which is for example, the YubiKey, basically a USB stick that you can plug into your computer, press the key and it authenticates you, all right? Now, an example of a platform authenticator would be the following. There's this website called webauthn.io and it's for demonstration purposes. For example, I give my username and I click, click register and it's my browser is going to give me a prompt to save this passkey within the browser. Now it's in German, disregard this, but if I click further, it's basically going to save it in the vault of the browser itself and it's very handy. Now the roaming authenticator is going to be the following. And I'm using AuthKit from WorkOS here. And I'm gonna click sign in and I'm gonna give my email, continue. And here I can also choose sign in with a passkey. And this is a roaming one because if I click, it's going to give me a QR, QR code that I, then I can scan with my phone, for example. And this is the roaming one. Well, when to choose which one? Actually, it just depends on your authenticator, okay? Some authenticators don't support roaming ones and don't support platform ones. So it really depends where you're trying to authenticate. But I would go for the platform because I think it's the easiest one for now. Now, we also have SSO and social logins. I put them together, but let's explore. SSO stands for single sign-on, and it's usually reliant on protocols such as SAML protocol and OpenID Connect protocol. SAML protocol is the older protocol. It's very widespread, especially in legacy systems and in enterprise environments. For example, if you're working for a mid-size or a large company, most likely your company 
uses SAML protocol to let their employees like you to log into the system only once. So SSO stands for single sign-on. And then if you log in once, you have access to all the underlying technologies, websites, documentation, and so on. And it uses XML to log you in. Now there's a different flow of logging you in, but it's basically one of the protocols that's supported. And also WorkOS supports that too. So if you're an employer who wants to, who has a pool of employees, you can use that. And OpenID Connect protocol, which is based on the OAuth standard, again, very widespread. And this is the more modern version and it's used by modern applications and it's based on JSON web tokens, all right? Of course, we also have social logins. For example, you can choose login with Google, login with Facebook, whatever. And they are also reliant on the OpenID Connect protocol. Now within my simple Next.js application, I have again those social logins. So if I click sign in, I'm gonna have three different options to choose from. If I click connect with Google, I'm going to select my own Google account, and then it's going to redirect me to the main page again. And if I go view account, it has my details. Now, how exactly did this work behind the scenes? Well, WorkOS makes it very simple. Actually, we have this button which redirects me to the login page. Then the login page uses this WorkOS in AuthKit Next.js package, which is provided by WorkOS. And by the way, WorkOS supports not only Next.js, but it also supports vanilla, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, Python, Java, whatever you can imagine a lot of support for different languages and libraries. And the single thing that I'm doing here is getting this get sign in URL. Because when you look at the URL where this login is hosted, and by the way, you can modify this freely and like with colors, with types of buttons, however you want, you're gonna see that this is actually the staging environment of WordPress. So I'm actually leaving my own application. And in the background, when we redirect the user to this sign in URL, the user signs in and obviously, we then get redirected to the callback URL where you can fetch the authorization code and then send it to the server again to fetch the access token. Again, this is done with a simple hook called handle auth. How simple is that? It means you don't have to recreate this complex authentication from scratch. WorkOS is going to do this for you. And this is why it's one of the reasons you, people usually go for available solutions. And in this case, WorkOS is pretty good because if I go to the dashboard of WorkOS, I'm gonna see that I have this authentication tab. And in the authentication tab, as you saw, I already have email and my password. I have pass keys. We're gonna talk about magic auth. And I also have the providers. So if I go to providers, I have Google enabled, GitHub enabled, Apple enabled, and you have a bunch of other op options to choose from. So you can freely go and do so. WorkOS doesn't only provide that, it also provides a lot of interesting things such as a role-based access control, or audit logs, feature flags, and much more. All in all, SSO is as good as Pesky's, and if I were you, I would support both ways. And of course, I would not do anything with uh, passwords. Another method is magic auth. And notice that I'm not saying magic links because magic links are still susceptible to phishing attacks. If someone sends you a fishy e link to your email and you click on it, you might eventually end up giving your details. But with the magic auth, you simply get a code that then you go and use on the website. And by the way, as I showed you, WordPress supports that too. And last but not least, device pairing. All of us have used this. This is a very modern way, again, of treating the devices themselves and not the users, because one of the devices is going to show you a QR code, for example, your laptop, when you try to log into your WhatsApp account, and then you're on your phone are going to scan this QR code to allow the device to be logged in by using your phone so that two devices are paired at the same time. Now, I would say everything here on the list list on this list is great, except for the passwords. As you see, I don't like them at all. Now let's talk about authorization. Again, very interesting topic. And the backbone of authorization is still the OAuth standard. And this time we're talking about OAuth 2.1. If we look at the latest release notes of 2.1, we're gonna see that the biggest change is actually the Pixie flow is now required for all OAuth clients using the authorization code flow. A lot of gibberish, what does it even mean? So if you've never used OAuth, it can be a complex topic. I totally understand, but I'm gonna give you some resources in the description so that you can learn about it in your free time. But long story short, there's there are multiple flows to the OAuth standard. Okay, one of them is called Pixie flow, or rather, it's like an extension of 
one of the flows, but let's call it a flow. What does it mean? So when we try to authenticate or auth authorize ourselves, not authenticate, I'm trying to forget the word authenticate. We're talking about authorization now. So we're going to send this code challenge next to other values. And this code challenge is this pixie flow, okay? This is something that we're going to verify with a code verifier when we send it again. Now, in the newest version of OAuth, pixie, this code verifier and the code challenge are necessary on top of the authorization code flow. We also have the client credential flow. Now, what's the difference? Well, the first one, the authorization code flow is perfect when you're trying to authorize a user who is using your application. And the client credential flow is meant for machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. For example, one microservice is trying to authorize another microservice. And last but not least, we also have the device grind flow. This is common for devices that just don't have keyboards, for example, CLIs or your TV that you're using at home because your TV doesn't have a keyboard or, well, it does nowadays, but it's not so easy to authorize itself. Instead, what you're often gonna have is the following device authorization button. And if I click on this and I start device authorization, I'm gonna get this interesting code, which is quite short. Now, what is happening with this is the following. You use your TV, the TV shows you this code, and on your phone, you go to this URL and it asks you to give the code that you saw on your TV, and this is how your device gets authorized. Again, I really like this flow actually, and it's supported, of course, in WorkOS, so I think WorkOS pretty much supports any use case that one would need. And last but not least, we're also gonna talk about the MCP auth. And someone has to authorize those AI agents, right? Well, WorkOS has a really great article on that. So I highly suggest you to go and read it if you're building AI agents and you need authorization. But long story short, MCP auth also relies on the Pixie flow. And one last time, shout out to WorkOS again, which is trusted by the biggest organizations out there, such as OpenAI, Indeed, and Cursor Anthropic. And because they're really providing all of everything that you would need in terms of authorization and authentication, and honestly, there's no reason not to go and try it out because it's most likely supporting your tech stack already, especially if you're trying to migrate to a new solution or if you're a company that's about to build their authorization and authentication. Now, with that said, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Subscribe and smash like and goodbye.